Hi everybody, I'm back. Today I'm going to be rotisserieing another chicken. I have thoroughly washed and cleaned my chicken. It has been marinating in organic chicken stock and liquid smoke and some paprika, some onion powder, some celery seed, some parsley flakes, some liquid smoke, some organic white pepper, some all-purpose Himalayan pink salt and pepper and garlic uh, seasoning blend, some garlic powder, and today um, in here I have mixed up a half a cube of butter and a generous squirt of the liquid smoke because I'm rotisserying this on my power in my power air fryer oven and I do want it to taste like it was cooked outside um, over some wood chips. Okay, I'm going to take this bird out of the seasoning bag and I will be right back to show you how I'm going to tie it up, get it on the rotisserie, and get it into the power air fryer oven. Okay, I will be right back. Okay, I've only rotisseried uh, two other chickens exactly like this in my air fryer, so I'm still kind of learning about this part. Um, when I had my big barbecue outside, uh, tying it up was not as much of a worry as it is inside the air fryer. Okay, I think I have those feet good and tight. If you have a little extra string, don't worry about that. That can be taken care of later. Tuck these wings back behind the body of the bird, I think. Nope, I think I'm going to lean forward. Just kind of tuck them in right there. And I'm going to pick my longest string without touching my counter. I'm going to get my longest piece of, and this is food quality rope. I found it, or string, twine, whatever you want to call it. It is food grade. Um, if you don't know where to find it, I found this at Fred Meyers. Um, I think back east, Fred Meyers also goes under the Kroger brand name. So if you don't find a Fred Meyers near you, um, look at your local Kroger store. Because I know my Fred Meyers out here sells um, all of my Kroger products. Whenever I need anything Kroger, like uh, my pie fillings and my fruit, uh, Kroger is by far, in my opinion, has the best fruit and the best fruits. Okay, that looks nice and tight. I'm not going to worry about this string right now. We're just going to leave that be. Okay, now I'm going to come down. And I'm going to get this smaller piece of string and I'm going to come underneath the back of the chicken and I want to come up around these legs and I want to tie them into place as well. I want to make sure this chicken is tied up really nice and tight. to do this. I usually have a little help and believe me, four hands when it comes to tying up a chicken are better than two. I'm going to go ahead and get this replaced again back up under the, the leg portion.
Okay. I think I got that good and tight, and I got a rope burn, so be very careful when you're doing this. Okay, now that bird looks secure. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to snip off snip off these ends. I don't need them. You do want to leave just a little bit though because you don't want it to come unwrapped. And if you cut it too short, there is the possibility that it will come unraveled. This one on the feet, I'm just going to tuck that back in. I'm going to tuck the tail up inside. I'm not going to tuck the tail up inside. Okay. The bird is wrapped. I am going to wash my hands and I will be right back. I decided to go ahead and I'm going to use this pink Himalayan black pepper and garlic blend to do just a quick dry rub on the outside of the bird. I used this last time and I really, really liked the flavor. So I'm just going to use just a little bit of that and just a little bit of smoked paprika. Now, smoked paprika absolutely does have flavor. A lot of people think that paprika does not have flavor, but it absolutely does. Absolutely does. Now, this bird is very, very juicy because like I said, he has been marinating all oh, for hours now in that uh, in this this uh, marinade of chicken broth organic chicken stock and the smoke hickory smoke flavoring okay we're gonna flip this guy back over here Ooh, come on leg you can't slip out that's not allowed okay I think I have this dry rubbed perfectly I'm gonna go ahead and wash my hands now, when you're washing your hands, any time that you are touching fresh fish, fresh meat, be it pork, chicken, beef, it doesn't matter, you need to thoroughly wash your hands between every time you touch a raw meat product before you touch anything else. Now, something that a lot of people do not know that your hands are only, um, let's see, I don't know exactly how to say this. The only way to get your hands um, bacteria free is to wash them. Now, I see a lot of people just rinsing their hands off, quick hit of cold water, and they're done. You do not kill the bacteria on your hands unless you are, one, using an antibacterial soap, two, washing them in hot, not warm, but hot water for a full 30 seconds. That is the only way that you can kill the bacteria on your hands. Just using a little bit of antibacterial soap is not good enough. Rinsing them off is not good enough. You want your hands squeaky, squeaky, sparkling clean. Anytime you stop touching your poultry and go to touch anything else. This particular time, I probably did not need to wash my hands because the next thing I'm gonna do is inject this chicken. But I didn't want my hands to be slippery. And as you can see, they are sparkling clean and very red because I use hot, hot water. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is inject this bird with this butter and liquid hickory smoke mixture that I've prepared. Okay, come right in here to the breast. And I'm going to come right in here. You kind of have to give it a good little stab to begin with so that that uh, pierces your meat. And then I'm going to turn this around and come into the breast from this direction. I want to go deep down into the breast 
and you can see it. See it puffing up? Okay, now we're going to do it again over here. I'm going to go deep down into the breast. Now watch. As I inject this, you can see it actually puff up. So I am injecting all this beautiful... Ooh, stay in there. It needs a Band-Aid. Okay, we're good. So I am injecting all this wonderful smoke flavor down into the depths of this chicken. So we are going to have one smoky, smoky good chicken. And like I said, you can just see it. Whoa! You can see it puff up and you can see it squirt out. Okay, once again, I'm going to give this a quick stir. A spoon. I don't think I'll be needing that anymore. I'm going to go ahead and flip. It's wanting to just get air right this second. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sit it right in there. So that I can get as much of this wonderful goodness up into my ejector as possible. Okay. Now I'm just going to let that set there. Okay. I'm going to want to come in here and get a little into this leg right. Oh, crud. Okay, I will be right back because i got to wash this. Okay, now we're going to get this bad boy on the spit. I'm looking for the neck opening. And I'm going to want to get this as high into the breast on this side as I can get it because the breast is the heavier part. That won't work. Okay. So I've got it fully in there. Now I'm going to come around this way. And I'm going to get this one on. This is where it gets just a little bit tricky because you need to get this screw back to this point. And now I'm going to want to come in as high as possible once again. Get into the legs maybe. Just get that in there. Okay, I think I'm to the point. Okay, I do believe that bird, nope, is not skewered. <laughs> Alright, like I said, this is a little tricky right here. I did not get enough of the meat with my prongs. So I'm going to go in here into the thigh portion and jam that in there. Okay, get it. You gotta make sure you get that screw into the screw slot. I still did not catch enough meat. I'm gonna try this one more time. If I don't get it this time, then I'm gonna go ahead and go off camera and get this bird on this, this skewer. I'm gonna try just stabbing him first and then seeing if I can get it down to the skewer. Looks like I'm going to be able to. This is kind of hard to do by yourself. Um, it is easier if you have two people doing just this little part right here. Okay, I've got him on. Now let's see if I got him All right, he's still going to be front heavy, breast heavy, but that happens very regularly when you rotisserie a chicken. It's very hard to get a chicken completely balanced on a spit. So, 
Once again, I'm going to go over and wash my hands. First, I'm just going to take a paper towel and I'm going to go ahead and wipe the ends off that go into the slots in the machine so that when I come back, these are all already wiped off and it's ready to be popped into the machine once I get my hands washed. That's if I can get all these seasonings off of it. It won't go into the uh, rotisserie unless um, these are clean. You don't want to jam any spices or anything up into the rotisserie part. Okay, I'm going to wash my hands and I will be right back. On the skewer, my hands are washed. One nice thing about the Power Air Fryer Pro is that the door is completely removable. It easily slides. I don't want to get chicken on it, raw chicken on it. But anyway, it easily slides in and out. So when you're making something like this chicken is really messy, I can go ahead and take that door off. And now we're going to take this bird. And get him into the rotisserie slot. And then you want to make sure that he gets into it. And you can feel it when it drops in because it doesn't rotate anymore. It stays pretty taut. Okay. Um, I'm going to wash my hands again. And I will be back to put the door on and start the machine. Start the cooking. Bird in the machine. And I'm going to go ahead and power it on. I am going to check the chicken function and the rotisserie function. And it starts cooking at 400 degrees for 30 minutes. And for a rotisserie chicken, I'm going to want to bump this up to 45 minutes. Whoop, one too many. And then I want to make sure that it is turning and it is not. So now we're going to go in and see if we can find out what the problem is. Okay, try this again. And there it goes. Okay, so I'm just going to make sure that it's not dragging too much. You have to be careful with the camera because you shoot right at the light. So come over here so that you're not catching the light. And hopefully you can see down in there and you can see the chicken is indeed rotating. Okay, so I will be back in, oh, about 20 minutes to check on the progress. And I will be going ahead and I will be throwing this marinade away because the raw chicken was in it and I decided that I am not going to use it. Okay, I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. I'm just going to take a quick peek in here. So I might get away from catching that light. I was hoping you'd be able to see that indeed the chicken is turning. Nothing is dragging, although it still is a little bit unbalanced. It is rotating and it is not dragging on the sides, it is not dragging on the bottom, and it is not dragging on the top. It is not touching the top. Okay, I'm very happy with how this is coming along. I'll be back in, oh, about 10-15 minutes to see how it's coming. Okay, I will be back. My oven has shut off. And I believe my chicken is done. See, it is extremely juicy. Okay. Oh, that looks so pretty. Let's see if I can get this flipped over here. Oh my goodness, it looks a little well done, not 
not overdone. It was a big chicken. Um, but it smells phenomenal. Take that little bit where it rubbed. Okay, I'm not going to do anything. Okay, I'm going to get my thermometer. And I'm going to stick it down here in the deepest part of the breast to start with. And 165 is done for a chicken. And that looks like it's at about 170. So I'm going to go ahead and pull it out of there. I was always taught that you take the temperature in the thigh. So I'm going to come into the thigh here. You never want to be touching any bone. Got that into the thigh. Turn this around. Oh yeah, this chicken is definitely done. Okay. I'm gonna set this to the side and flip this over. And now I'm just gonna let this rest for about, oh, 10, 15 minutes. Let this rest because if I try to slice into it now, all of those beautiful juices that we injected and that uh, marinated itself as it's rotisserieing, um, if I were to cut it right now, all those juices would come flying out. So we're just going to let it sit here and rest for about 15 minutes before we cut into it so that all of the juices can go ahead and relax and the meat can relax and it will stay nice and juicy when we carve it. Okay, we'll be right back.